Hi, Year 10. Welcome back to your poetry revision lessons. So uh, your Dean task is on the board. Why did Percy Shelley write Love's Philosophy? So what was his message? What was you trying to communicate? What language techniques are important in the poem that he's used? And then describe, if you can, the form of the poem, but only uh, if you are doing the form and structure, harder level things. OK, so pause this video and do those tasks now. Amazing. So um, he wrote it because he was trying to persuade a girl to give him a kiss, if or more, possibly. Um, he used a range of language techniques, but including lots of um, nature and including questioning as well. There is religious language in it too, um, and alliterations in there quite a lot, but you've got all of those in your annotated copy of the poem too. If you were going to talk about form and structure, then it's similar to a romantic poem and you've got the repetition of the question at the end of both the stanzas. Okay, so today we're going to move on and we're going to look at Sonnet 29, I think of thee, which is the rude one. Okay, so that always um, is one that's memorable for students, I think. Okay, so it was written by Elizabeth Barrett Browning, who's one of England's most famous writers and poets, poet people. Um, and she was married to Robert Browning, also a writer. Um, and this is believed to have been a love letter that she sent to him during their relationship when they weren't allowed to uh, speak to each other. Okay, so we'll take it from there. Um, the idea here is that you know what the poem's about and obviously we want to be analysing the language so that you can write essays and p-calls that achieve your target grade as a minimum. So, context behind the poem. They did get married in the end, but not straight away. They had to sort of run away together. Um, Sonnet 29 was written during the Romantic period of English literature, so using nature to express feelings. Um, her strict father had, had banned her basically from marrying her lover Robert because he was deemed to be not posh enough, not good enough, not rich enough. Um, so they uh, had a long distance secret relationship and eventually they got married and then fled the country to live in Italy. Um, so she's describing her intense feelings towards Robert, uh, which include her sexual feelings, but also romantic ones, and the fact that she's forbidden from seeing him uh, also and how that's making her feel. Okay. Thank you. That's all right, don't we? Okay, so uh, the poem is on the board now. If you've got your own anthology, you can be using that to uh, help yourself as we go through this. If you don't have your own anthology, then you need to um, either find an annotated copy online or you need to um, basically print off this and write on it as we go through. There are some words defined on the right-hand side then. So twine is when you wrap around something. Naught is another way of saying nothing. Straggling means like, you know, if a girl's got really untidy hair, it looks like she's been out in the wind, you'd call that straggling. So it's not, not uniform, it's not orderly. And in sphere, uh, it means totally enclosed, to wrap around something. Okay, so let's go through it. I think of thee. Uh, my thoughts do twine and bud about thee as wild vines about a tree. Put out broad leaves and soon there's naught to see except the straggling green which hides the wood. Yet, O oh my palm tree, be it understood, I will not have my thoughts of instead of thee, who art dearer, better, Rather instantly renew thy presence as a strong tree should. Rustle thy boughs and set thy trunk all bare. And let these bands of greenery which ensphere thee drop heavily down, burst, shattered everywhere. Because in this deep joy to see and hear thee and breathe within thy shadow a new air, I do not think of thee. I am too near thee. Okay, so we're going to go through that section by section. So the first thing to notice is you've got lots of direct address, lots of personal pronouns. So it's I think, it's my thoughts. Um, and she, so she's really talking about very personal, private things. Okay, it's addressed to a particular person. The, in the first two lines, means you. It's an old-fashioned way of saying you. So I'm thinking of you. Uh, my thoughts do twine and bud. So twine, we've already said, is to wrap around. So her thoughts are wrapping around the idea of him. So she can't escape him. He's central to everything she's doing. Um, it also links to the extended metaphor that exists in this poem, which is to do with vines and a tree. So vines are 
things that twine around they grow around the trunk of a tree um, and then we put the word bud at the end of that first line that's important as well because it's believed to be and it is um, a euphemism so that's when you say one word to mean something else so it's kind of a slang term uh, that maybe suggests the clitoris okay and th uh, which is the center of women's uh, pleasure when it comes to sex so she's thinking of him her thoughts are wrapped around him possibly with the sexual nature coming through there as well so my thoughts do twine and bud about thee as wild vines about a tree but the adjective wild there so these aren't just careful gentle vines they're wild as though she's out of control of her emotions um so they they uh twine and bud about the as wild vines about a tree then she says to him it's an, an imperative um, so put out broad leaves she's telling him what to do and soon there's naught to see except the straggling green uh, so she's asking him to sort of spread his arms and like give her a big hug and like wrap her body up within him okay um straggling green again that's a, a suggestion that maybe things are a bit out of control maybe she's not quite as um groomed if you like as perhaps you might expect okay and then it says that the green hides the wood so again wood here can be a euphemism it perhaps suggests he's got an erection okay or it's a reference to his penis she then carries on yet oh my palm tree uh, so that's a, a term of endearment for him it's like a pet name isn't it my palm tree uh, she then says be it understood i will not have my thoughts instead of thee so she'd rather not have to think about him she'd rather he was there as well uh, because he are better art dearer better so she would rather have him there so instantly renew thy presence so rather just come back and see me come and be with me as a strong tree should rustle thy boughs and set thy trunk all bare again that could be a sexual reference for sh getting his body out basically the bows would be his arms and his legs and again the trunk might be a reference to his penis um, and let these bands of greenery which in sphere thee drop heavily down so she is the bands of greenery that in sphere him and if she drops heavily down from him that might mean because she's reached the peak of her emotions so maybe this separated triple burst shattered everywhere is a reference to her sexual pleasure maybe she gets to her orgasm at this point whether that's when he's back she's imagining that sexual encounter will be like this or she could be um she could be talking about so i've lost my train of thought there so either yeah so either it's it's thoughts of what will happen when he comes back or maybe she's masturbating and it, she's talking about how she feels now while she thinks about him because in this deep joy to see and hear thee and breathe within thy shadow a new air i do not think of thee i am too near thee so it's not like thinking of him when they're together it's not like he's a separate person she's too wrapped up literally in him to see him as a separate person it's like they need each other they're part of the same whole so it's a very personal very private very sexual poem that we've got going on here at this point i'm just going to say a few things about the structure as well um, because if we do have people that are aiming to write about form and structure you need to have that opportunity so uh, the first thing i would point out is that there is a bit of a, um, a rhyme scheme but it's not it's not you know very very obvious so the second and third lines tree and c for example rhyme um, and then at the bottom of the poem we've got the and the that rhyme and then the again so some of it rhymes but not all of it in addition we've talked before when we've looked at poetry about the idea of caesura and enjambment so caesura is where you cut in the middle of a line remember it links to caesarean section a c-section when you have a baby it's to do with cutting um severing something in the middle so that's when you get um a, a phrase finished within a line and to finish a phrase you have to use a full stop a question mark or an exclamation mark okay so when you get one of those in the middle of a line that's caesura so for example on line one two three four five six seven you've got an exclamation mark after the word better okay which therefore separates that in the middle of the line as well as that we've got three cases where there is a hyphen in a line so at the start i think of thee with an exclamation mark so again that's a caesura with a gap created by that hyphen then uh, and then there's another hyphen just before burst shattered everywhere and then one again in the last line so that interrupts this idea of regular lines of poetry and it makes it something much more org organic much more um 
unstructured, wild again. It's that idea of not being in control. So the words in the poem are not as in control either. Um, so where you've got scissora, you also have enjambment. The two go hand in hand. So uh, enjambment is when a line in a poem doesn't stop. At the end of the line, it carries on and on into new lines. So for example, my thoughts to twine and bud about the as wide, wild vines about a tree, put out broad leaves and soon there's naught to see, except the straggling green which hides the wood. That's a very long bit of poetry, isn't it? That's three and a half lines long. So that would be on Jeanment. And it creates this idea that her thoughts are carrying away. Um, she's not able to think clearly either. Her thoughts are all over the place when she thinks about him or when she's sexually excited by the idea of him. Um, and then the other thing I would say about um, form and structure is that um, so it's uh, towards the bottom, fourth line up. Um, it says drop heavily down, hyphen, burst, shattered, everywhere, exclamation mark. So like I said, we went through it. That could be a reference to an orgasm, whether the one she wants to have in the future or the one she's having while she thinks about him. But that is separated from the rest. It's like a real attention is drawn to it through the hyphen and then through the exclamation mark as well. Okay, so that is very, very standouty, which might be because it represents that... Um, the culmination of her sexual pleasure. Okay? Okay, so there is a link here on YouTube for you to watch a video. I will post that link on Show My Homework so you can find it as well. I am expecting that while we've been through that poem there, you've done lots of annotating. You've got a bit of a cheat here. If you have your anthology with you, then you will have one already annotated. But I do need you to email me a picture of your annotated poem. So either one you've done today or one that you already have in existence. Okay, and if there's a reason why you can't do that, get in touch with me and let me know. Uh, okay, so that's it for today's lesson. We'll carry on working through that next time. See you later.